Let's make a sister's choice pillow. Today we're going to make a pillow cover. We're going to do it in the sister's choice pattern. That's this block right here. So we're going to take this and make it a little bit bigger and I'm going to use Americana colors. So let's get some fabrics, let's get it cut out and start sewing. I've got my fabrics picked out here. I'm using seven different Americana prints for the Sister's Choice block. The block has two different peachy colored rose fabrics and two different backgrounds, but I'm only going to use one choice here. So I'm going to use these two for all of the points because they're really strong and it's going to give it some extra impact. This block is a little small for a pillow, so I'm going to make it bigger. I'm going to cut three and a quarter inch squares. Now to make my half square triangles, you need to cut those squares a little larger. You need to cut them three eighths of an inch larger. So I'm going to cut those three and five eighths. So I've got everything cut here. These are going to be in the block. These are going to be the corners. The only other items I need, I'm going to need a border. And this is going to be a flange. It's going to look kind of like binding. Then we have our backing and our batting, and that's all we need. To make the half square triangles, we're going to draw on the back of each of these light prints. This is the back side. I like to use a pencil, and we're just going to draw from point to point. Then we're going to take these over to the sewing machine, and we are going to sew one quarter inch away from this line, we're going to sew on each side of it. We're going to make two stitching lines. So each of these is going to go right on top of one of these red ones. We're going to stitch on each side. We're going to cut it down the middle, and then we're going to have two half square triangles from each one of these sets. Line up your pieces right sides together and stitch right along that line a quarter inch away from it. So my presser foot is a quarter inch. So I can just go right along the line there. I'm actually going to do all of these all at once. Now I'm just going to spin it around and do the other side. Now we'll take these over to the ironing board. I like to iron them flat first before I cut them because sometimes when we're stitching on this diagonal here, it can stretch out of shape a little bit. I'm going to give these a quick pressing just to flatten them back out. Now I'm going to use my scissors right now. You can take these over to your cutting board and use your blade if you want. But this has already been sewn exact, so even if I'm a little crooked with my cutting right now, it won't affect the finished size of the pieces. Now we are going to open these up and we're going to iron that seam towards the dark side. That's all you have to do. The Sister's Choice block, it's just a five by five block piece of patchwork. So we are gonna lay out our corner points here. They're kind of pointing toward each other. Then we're gonna fill in with our other pieces. So I like the flag right in the middle. And then I'm gonna put this red star right around it. And then I'm going to put the blue right here. 
the light one in the corners. And this blue star here. Once you have your pieces cut, you can trade pieces around. So for instance, say you wanted the flag in the middle, but you want this blue one here. Let me show you another view here because it, this is a matter of preference. So you can change it around. You may like it better like that. With all the red in the corners. So you can move the pieces around and get it the way you like. When you have your block laid out the way you like it, you have two choices for sewing the pieces together. You can make each row individually and then sew the rows together, or you can use the method I use where I'm gonna sew these two pieces together and leave them on the machine, and then these two, these two, these two, and then I'm gonna add these rows, keeping all those little strings between the blocks so that I don't get anything mixed up. So let's get started. I'm just going to take these two and sew them together. I'm going to leave it on the machine. These two come next. So I'm taking the first two for the whole block and just stitching down. Now we're not going to trim our pieces apart. We're going to leave them sewn together. I'm just going to slide this over just a little bit. Now we are going to add this row all the way down. So just start at the top. This piece goes right here. And same procedure. Go all the way down. Open up and sew the next one on. I've got the last couple of pieces here. And the top will be done. The rows will be done anyway. It's always a good idea right now to check and make sure you've got everything facing the right way, specifically the half square triangles need to be pointing to themselves, pointing the points together. Now, you're going to want to finger press these seams going opposite directions. So this is a little bit thicker here. It wants to go to the outside. And then we're going to do the other one towards the middle, towards the middle, towards the outside, and then alternate. So that was going that way. This is going to go this way. Then when we sew the rows together, it'll lay nice and flat because you can just butt those seams right up next to each other. So I'm drawing my fingernail right across that, and it really does flatten it out and keep it going the way you want. Now we're gonna flip this over, and we're gonna stitch right down. So because those strings are there, we know we have them in the right order, and it really helps match. So start at the top here. And make sure you have, if you wanna look, you wanna make sure your intersections are all matched. So we want these seams lined up, but you can feel with your fingers because this seam allowance is going that way and the bottom one is going the other way and you can really feel if they're matching. We've got one more row to sew on here. Let's get that finished up. Now you'll notice I didn't trim off the dog ears, the dog ears here. You can if you like, I just don't find that they add very much bulk. Now, if you want to see if your seams are matched up and lined up real well, you can trim apart this little stitching. You can peel this open and see if this line is lined up on that line. I like to finger press these seams before I iron them. 
So I'm going to pull it open hard and draw my fingernail down across it. It just makes it much easier to iron if they're already facing the way you want them to go. Now let's take it over to the ironing board and steam press it. I'm ready to put my borders on. I'm going to do a small border around this pillow because pillows have dimension and if your star points go all the way to the edge, you lose them as they come down the pillow because it's curved. So that's why I'm going to put this light border around the edges here. So I'm just stitching with a quarter inch seam. And I'm just going to go all the way around all four sides. Now we're going to put this outer border on. This is going to end up being a flange. It's a little decorative trim on the pillow. So we're going to sew it on the same way. As with any border, stitch it on without stretching. Just lay it right down and don't stretch. The smaller your border is, the more important it is to have an exact seam allowance. If you are wavering in your sewing and your border is four inches and you waver a little, it's not going to show. But if your border is only, you know, one and a quarter inches and you waver a little, it's really going to look crooked. So try to be really, really straight on these. for one last ironing. We want it really, really flat. I've got a piece of batting here. I use the Hobbs, 80% cotton, 20% polyester. This is just a little scrap I have left over. I just need a piece that's bigger than this top here. This just makes it. I've ironed this really, really flat, you can see, and I'm going to put some pins in it. You could, of course, put this pillow top on your long arm if you want, but I didn't really want quilting taking away from this bold design, so I'm just going to stitch in the ditch so that none of the quilting shows on the patchwork. So I'm just going to put a few pins in so nothing moves. It's really easy to quilt this way because we're just quilting to the batting. There's no backing, so even on my machine, It'll quilt up really, really easy. So let's take it over to the machine. We're going to edge stitch around and then we're going to quilt it. I'm going to stitch around the edge here and I'm going to use an exact quarter inch from the raw edge. We need that straight stitching line because we're going to use that when we finish the pillow. So we need a nice straight line. And in fact, I think I'm going to use a contrast color thread so I can see it easily on the bottom because the white won't show very much. Let's use a light green. So quarter inch from the edge, really, really straight. We're going to quilt around the edge, quilt here, and then we're gonna do this big square and this big square, and that's all we have to do. So I'm going to go right in the ditch. So I went all the way around the outside. Now I'm going to go in this seam all the way around. Now I've switched thread colors. I'm using a navy here because it's going to show less around here than the gold. The top is all quilted. You can see from the back, because I used a different color thread, I just went around and around and around. So it's very, very stable. Now we're ready to put the back on for the pillow. So I've got a little more than a half a yard here, and I split it. So I'm gonna take this first half of that, and I'm gonna fold it, and I'm going to put this a little beyond halfway. So I'm a little bit farther up than half of the pillow. 
Now I'm going to take the second half. I'm going to leave the selvages on there because that'll keep it from fraying or coming apart there. And I'm going to set this on here, make sure everything is nice and flat. Now I'm going to pin it through all these layers. You can feel where the edge of it is. So I'm just going to pin this a couple times and I'm going to flip it over, pin from the other side. So I'm going to flip the whole thing over. It's still nice and flat. And we're going to pin around the edge and then we're going to stitch just inside this stitching line. That's why we needed to have it nice and straight because we're using that as our guide for stitching our pillow front to back. So put a few pins in and then trim away some of the excess fabric so it's not in your way. Take it over to the sewing machine and then we're going to just stitch right inside this line here. And if you want to move your pins that were back here to this side, you can. It's always nice to know where they are so you don't sew over them and break a needle. I'm going to stitch just inside this stitch line, just a little bit. Nice and straight, but just inside. Now we're going to trim off the excess batting and backing. We're going to leave about a quarter inch seam allowance. Just trim all four sides and a little bit of the bulk in the corner. So just a little bit, bit of that in the corner. Okay, let me show you how to flip this and make it really, really flat. So we've got our opening here. We're just gonna turn it right side out and then we're gonna poke the corners out. There's a lot of tools for getting your corners nice and flat, but since we've gotten that excess bulk out, fingernails work pretty good. Now to make the edges lay real flat, we want this seam right in the middle of the edge and just smoothing it out doesn't work that well. So press this over until you can feel that seam there and open it up and draw your fingernail across it. Then when you press it with your hands, that seam is gonna go right in the middle there. So do that for all four sides. So just squish it over here. It feels funny. But because you've got all the batting and seam allowances, they naturally want to go that way. So I'm opening them up and then ironing them flat with my hands. Same thing here. And it makes a nice, flat, clean edge. Now you can flip it over. Now the last step we are going to do is I'm going to stitch again right here and that's going to make the flange on the pillow. So this part is going to lay flat while the pillow puffs up here. So got it nice and flat. We'll just take it over to the machine and start stitching. Got the pillow finished. I put the pillow form in it. Here's the opening back here. You can see I've got a green pillow inside there. I'm just covering one of my old pillows. You want to use a nice squishy pillow. And it looks a lot better when you quilt it and put some batting behind there because it fits better on the pillow form that way. This is the little flange that we made. It finishes it off really nicely. It frames it really well. Now, the pillow cover we made, if you don't want to put a pillow in it, it looks just as good for a table topper. So this is one, just another pillow cover, but I just didn't put the pillow in it. So that would look really nice on the middle of your table. Mm -hmm. We'll have this item as a kit. We'll have other colors. And the procedure that I showed you for making the pillow cover works with any block. So we used Sister's Choice, but you can pick another one. So have fun quilting. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. <laughs>